This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Stick Tamer Bow Silencers. Are you a traditional archery hunter or shooter? Stick Tamer was specifically designed for the recurve shooter. Made of a hybrid foam rubber material, Stick Tamer is designed to deaden string slap and limb vibration. Stick Tamer reduces limb and string noise, water resistant, and lasts shot after shot. Made in the USA from a hybrid foam rubber for durability. To purchase Stick Tamer and for more information, visit Three Rivers archery.com and blackwidowbows.com stick tamer bow silencers are available exclusively at three rivers archery.com and blackwidowbows.com We back at it. Big Dave. <laughs> got Dave here with me on production. I got Dan Ooh. Hall in on the phone. That's right. So everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls. Man, I tell you, this is the time of year when deer processing shops is slammed busy. And we've got one of the best ones in the state of West Virginia on here tonight from Shady Springs, West Virginia. Dan, what you been into, buddy? Oh, you know, still doing that whole working thing. Oh, you're still out of town. Well, you know what next week is? It's turkey, turkey, turkey time. <laughs> no, I ain't worried about no turkey, turkey, turkey. It's gun, gun, gun. Yeah, gun season <laughs> starts Monday. That's for sure. But, oh, you know, I love... right. I'll be home for the whole week, boys. This boy right here likes to eat just as much as he loves to hunt, so I had to mention what well, I love. We, <laughs> we know that, Michael. We know that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> No, I just love this whole time of the year, fall, Absolutely. Thanksgiving. Best time of the you year. You know, rifle yeah. season coming in. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So, our deer season here starts Monday morning early. Yes. Bright and early, so. Yeah, and it looks like rain first day. Too. I know. That's what I was looking at here. I mean, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, to too. Mm. Yeah. Well, Mike likes to get out in the woods about 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come on. Come on. Nah, hey, I've hunted with him enough. I know better than he that. He knows better than that. <laughs> yeah. To the limit of uh, getting hey. mad and getting ready to leave him at the house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I get it honest, do I not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, I got my got my rifle sighted in. I was in the woods a couple weeks ago, saw a couple bucks where I'm yeah. gonna be going. So that's what that's I'm what happy. another thing I was gonna mention. Uh, we gotta go this weekend. Just got my son's rifle in. His is his first high powered rifle. We got it in today, ordered it from Outdoor Pro Shop. So uh just wanna give them a little plug. If you guys uh, are into getting anything outdoors, hunting, hiking, uh, fishing, anything like that, go to Outdoor Pro Shop, LLC. That's outdoor-pro-shop.com. And uh, use promo code PODCAST10, and that'll give you 10% off your entire order. So give them some love. Nice. That's right. We just got some, uh, they just sent us some stickers with our gun and two koozies. I got one here. And- Dave's got one here, and I, I don't think we got Dan one, but we did get him a sticker. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll be fun. sure when, when I'm around him, I'm going to slap it right on the back of his truck. <laughs> nice three, <laughs> nice 250 of his. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. guys. So without further ado, please welcome with me Gary and George with Hunter's Choice Specialty Products. How you guys doing this evening? Doing great. How are you guys? Buddy, we're doing amazing. Yes. Yes. So you. I know you guys got limited time. You all are like, you know, slammed busy right now. So we're going to kind of make this a little short evening, but uh, we've got some questions for you. So, all right, shoot. Tell us a little bit about the background. How did all this get started? Uh, Okay. So, Hunter's Story started back in 1999. Uh, My brother and I uh, decided that we wanted to. you know, go into deer processing. It seemed like everybody, you know, all of our friends and acquaintances and family always wanted us to cut deer. So we said, you know, we might as well make some money out of it. So we yeah. started a business in 99. Um, but we uh, we wanted to do something a little different than what most people do. So, you know, we, we do the, uh, along along with uh, the regular deer processing, we do the summer sausages and the jerkies and 
specialty products. And uh, so it kind, of, it kind of bloomed and blossomed from there. Awesome. awesome. Uh, I mean, I know you guys are busy right now. How's the harvest been so far this year for the bow season? You guys staying up? actively busy or is it kind of hit and miss a little bit well the beginning of the season was kind of you know it was, it was kind of slow the weather kind of uh it's kind of hard to hunt when it's 80 degrees sure yeah <laughs> but it seemed like uh from from halloween on it, it's been it's been non-stop uh for the past two weeks it's been uh it's been extremely busy like above average busy nice. uh, so we are uh well, we also got in um, 16 deer last Monday that we had to cape. And, oh, and oh, wow. they were all, I mean, they were all legit bucks. Yeah, oh, 130 wow. to 170. The biggest buck we brought in was 176 inches. Um, but last Monday, everything was probably 120 to 176. Wow. Yeah. Now, is that, uh, what all states are people bringing deer from? Or not states, but uh, counties. Well, no states and states also. Uh, we, uh, we've had Missouri, Missouri, Missouri Ohio. Uh, oh, really? Virginia, West Virginia. Um, we, we've got people driving from Clay County, Greenbrier County, Monroe County. Wow. Um, so we've got them from inside West Virginia. The farthest drive so far has been two and a half hours. Two and There's and a half also hours. a bunch of people that know us that's going, you know, Midwest hunting and, and bringing them back to us. Bringing them back to you. Sure. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Right. Now you all do some stuff for some of the uh, reserves around here, correct? That's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> we do. Um, uh, we process. Uh, I mean, we, we've done elk, we've done Watusi, we've done uh, buffalo, buffalo um, red, stag. red stags, goat sheep. You pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> if it could be on a hunting reserve, we've cut it up. Have you got to do a Neil guy yet? Yes, we have actually. Oh, nice! Uh, I was gonna say I, I was hoping not because I was I'm really debating on it. I think <laughs> I might come up there and kill me a Neil guy. Yep, that, actually we uh, we've only done one, um, and we, uh, we had one last year. Who is that Neil nice. guy? <laughs> <laughs> He's on the plate. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that that was ignorant, Michael. <laughs> I like. As it. soon as you say, I've heard the I've heard the name before, and I was like, "Who is that Neil guy?" Oh yeah. man, them things look crazy. Oh yeah, they're from what I've understood, they're some of the some great eating meat. Where are those? Well, it looks like it looks like just a big cow. That's what I mean. That's what it looks yeah. like. Oh well, that's oh, got yeah. almost it's like a cross, it's, huh? It's just a cow with really big horns. Yeah, uh, nice. That's, that's, yeah. So what uh, what preserve so, is that that you all bring stuff in from? Uh, a lot of it comes from Mountain Meta down in Greenville, in Monroe right. County. Okay, nice. Now you were talking about the 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 antlers. Uh, is that is that like uh, bigger than normal, like on average, or is that is that pretty average? Year, uh, this year has been. Um, I mean, typically during bow season, we get a lot of you know, I don't want to say scrub bucks, but I mean smaller bucks. Right. Um, sure. it, but but this year, I mean, the the quality of bucks that came out of uh, bow season so far has been. It's been really good. Is that the now, mass? Is that just the mass? Southern, there Southern West Virginia, well, we can see the mass is good. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, also, is, I wonder if that's like counting the new people. So got the horns this year. Well, yeah, like I said, I wonder if that's accounting for the drop in limit where we're only allowed to kill them two this year. People and being more, uh, people and taking more choices or not killing okay. the first thing they see. We're only allowed to kill two this year. Well, but typically, I think that passed, didn't it? I yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah, I think it did. That's next yeah. Year. Well, is it next year? I thought it passed for this year. You're only allowed two bucks. Oh, maybe right. so. Yeah, I think it's right. Okay. Uh, but typically, we find that you know bow hunters are a little more selective than once the guns start cracking. I mean, it, it, if it's brown, it's down. It's <laughs> yeah, <most of> it. <laughs> that's that's but, the saying. Uh, yeah. It does seem like, you know, in both season, you know, people are a little bit more selective, but, um, but this year, the, uh, uh I don't know. The, the, well, I guess the selection of bucks has been better this year. Yeah. As far yeah, as that yeah, goes. Yeah, they have been. Hmm. Man, so 100, in 176 so, inches. Where'd that one come out of? What's that? 176 inches. Is that what you said earlier? Yeah, it came out of McDowell County. Wow. Wow. Mm. Uh, I was going to say but, McDowell or Mingo. I mean, you got that cold country. But we've had some 150s, 160s come out of Raleigh. So, 
there's been some there's been some good bucks. Yeah, man, it's nuts. Yeah, I've I've been seeing a lot on Facebook. Pretty pretty decent sized ones, and amazingly younger younger uh, individuals killing some pretty nice ones. Like yeah, you know, I'm like I'm sitting there like this girl. She was 16, 17 years old, and has already killed a uh, trophy class deer. Like good lord, I remember I was what I was doing at seventeen years old. I was killing what I could kill. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, yeah, that's right. But yeah. it's different now. I mean, you know, I, growing up, I mean, that, that, and George will say the same thing. I mean, that's all we did from high school on. All we wanted to do is be in the woods. But once you have kids, I, I don't even carry a gun. Anymore. Uh, it, it's just it, it. It's more. There's more excitement in watching your kids shoot one than there sure. ever was killing one of mine. So, yeah, uh, I believe I, I agree with. That. Plenty of rather see a young kid kill one and get the enthusiasm for hunting than uh, I'd give up every deer that I've ever killed to watch my son shoot another one. Yeah, right. That's awesome. Dan, you seen that one that uh, Dave Beer's uh, niece killed up there in, yes. in, in PA? It's just right outside of Morgantown. Yeah, yeah, that um, was a dandy. Yeah, lose her name, so we give a shout out to her, man. That was an awesome buck. I mean, for her age, I think she's only like seven. <laughs> Yeah. And she's already killed two bucks that size. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. You know, but 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 here's the thing. When it comes to a kid, it doesn't matter if it's a spike or a twelve point. The no. excitement level is still there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, and you, you that's the Sorry. way you keep the hunting tradition going. You you get them into that, you know. I tell the story a lot. Me and my son was out hunting and you know, um we had this uh spike come up and uh no it wasn't spike, it was three point. And you know he he didn't want to shoot it, and he said, "Daddy, he was uh, he." I think at that time he wasn't shooting uh, yet. He just had his BB gun out there because I've had him out in the woods since he was four. And uh, he's like, "Dad, you're not going to take that." And I'm like, "No, I'm not." So I kind of let it pass. And as it was getting ready to go up over the hill, he's like, "Dad, you need to take that." So <laughs> I ended up taking it. But you know, it's just things like that. He's going to remember forever. I took my son hunting uh, yesterday. Uh, he's 11, Paxton, and uh, took him out in the blind. And Doe came up. He said, "You know what, Dad? I don't. I, that's just that's not what I want to shoot." Uh, little spike came up. He said, "Dad, that's not what I want." And those deer stayed around there for you know hour, hour and a half. And for an 11 year old to, to just watch those deer walk around is a big deal. And uh, Four point came up and he said, Dad, I want that one. Took 20 minutes for that buck to get where it needed to be. And then with his crossbow, hard shot, went 30 yards, dropped. And the excitement on his face just, it was, <laughs> it was awesome. That's great. Oh, man. That's, that is awesome. So are you guys, uh, with you guys caping these deer and stuff, do you have a local taxidermy you like to send them to or you recommend people to well, go I, to? I mean, the guy that I normally use, uh, uh, he actually retired this year. Um, so we try to give uh, the hunter, I mean, nine times out of 10, the guy knows where he wants to send them. Uh, so what we try to do is cape them on the spot. I mean, if, you, if, if as long as we've got the crew there that we normally have, we'll, we'll cape them, hand the cape right back to them, and then, you know, they'll go to whoever they want. But there's, there's several uh, I mean, there, there, there's, there's eight or ten, you know, good tax nervous around here, and I mean, everybody is just. Uh, yeah, it all depends on what they want. I mean, yeah. you know, if you want to pay a thousand dollars for a, you know, for a show buck, or you know, or, or just, sure. just one, six or seven hundred dollars for a, whatever. But yeah, absolutely. But but you know, uh, we've also got guys that you know uh, they just want a European mount, so we've got a guy that. Uh, um, just a retired guy that, you know, out of his garage that, you know, yeah. does European mounts. So it, it's all, um, but they're legit. I mean, he does yeah. a good job. Nice. Does he do the boil or the beetles or do you know? The boil. Boil. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, like what most people are doing anymore. It's hard, getting harder and harder to find people to do that's using the beetles. There is a, it's, a, it's a lot longer turnaround too. There is. Um, uh, the, the, uh, there is a guy in the drug chain that does the beetles, but, uh, one, he's more expensive, and two, and takes a lot longer. This guy, he'll have a head turned around in four days, and that's oh, just wow. that's that's pretty remarkable, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, yeah, and you know, as, as busy as we get, um, 
we run that yeah. thing during bow season now. Come gun season, it's hard to tell what he'll what the turnaround will be, but you know, so we'll probably bury him. But you know, what we want to do at our shop, we want to be as close to a you know one stop shop as we can. Uh, so we try to give them the opportunity to, you know, go to a taxidermist or, you know, um, this gentleman that George knows do the European mounts, um, the specialty products and, you know, try as close as we can when you can't be here, you know, everything's ready. Sure. But it's hard to make summer sausage overnight. Yeah, it is. Yes, I mean, yes, it is. There's a process yeah. in that, you know, I mean, people's got to be, got to know. If you do summer sausage and jerky. All that stuff, you just can't turn it overnight. No. So tell us about some of y'all's packages y'all offer. During buck season, our goal is to make sausage every day. So our our goal is, um, you know, to have, you know, once a deer is cut, you know, as long as you give us two or three days, you know, we're hoping to have all the summer, all the specialty stuff done. So the week can, uh, you know, typically during a deer season that we have, uh, on average, uh, we're bringing in 100 to 125 deer a day during buck season. Um, we try to cut 75 to 80 deer a day. And, um, and again, my brother is the one that, that'll do the sausage during buck season. So, you know, we're hoping that, you know, by the time, you know, within a two or three day turnaround, when you come back, you know, you'll have, you'll have your, your steaks vacuum sealed and frozen as well as your summer sausage. But once it's cut, it also goes into a big freezer. And yeah. It's all vacuum sealed, so right. You know. So with you guys doing trying to get seventy, seventy five or plus done a day, how many how many guys you running on the line there with scanning and? Uh, well, we have uh, I have two people skinning. My son and another gentleman will be skinning. Um, those two will skin a hundred deer a day. Gosh, um, that's good. Then we have uh, uh, me and uh, George, and uh, my brother will be the ones cutting. And then we'll have three or four people, four or five people in the in the cutting room. And then we have three people up front doing the processing, the checking in, the checking out, and that kind of thing. Okay. So, All right. So, but we tip a little start- machine then. It is. Um, we've had we've had people come in and they want you know. To, there, there's always a couple of people that come in from Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and uh, you know they come in and they want a quick turnaround. Yeah. Um, the quickest we've ever turned a deer around um, from a time it stopped at the back dock and my skinner got a hold of it to the time we laid the box on the front counter for him to pick it up was 15 minutes. Oh Lord, man! But we also don't recommend that. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah. Recommend- don't, deer he didn't need, want to do that, but but he was rushed and wanted to go. Yeah, he had to go. I mean, typically, I like letting deer hang at least at le- during during bow season. I let deer hang, you know, uh, ten to fourteen days. I mean, because yeah. I mean, it just as long as the deer is everything that we do depends on what the hunter does in the woods. If mm-hmm. if, if they take care of you properly in the woods, uh, we can let a deer hang seven to ten days easy. Yeah. Um, during buck season, we can't do that. So, you know, whatever comes in Monday goes out on Tuesday. But we have to have at least a 24-hour chill, um, one, for the safety of the meat, sure. and two, just to make a better quality cut. Yeah. Now, do you all send them out flash freezing, or is it just? Yeah. 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 Yes, we do. Okay, good. Yeah, our freezer, our freezer runs minus 10, minus 15. Nice. And uh, so as soon as they're cut, they go straight in the freezer. Good deal. <laughs> So, uh, I'm still, go ahead, Dan. No, oh, I was just, I was just talking to myself, actually. I was just <laughs> 15 minutes from the time it hit the dock and skint and cut and boxed. Oh my God. That's I know. Awesome. Is that That's not impressive. crazy? Yeah. So what's so obviously uh, that was nothing special. That was just straight cut burgers and ready, steaks ready to go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that, that's, well, you, uh, can't, you can't do that. Well, that's tender. I steak. Um, that that's, I'm just saying what you're saying. That's tenderized steak, sliced steak, roast, burger, stew meat. You know, the, but no, keep in mind that's a rush. Yeah, that's sure. Not, that's something we do every day. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, typically we're cutting between seven and ten deer an hour. Now that you number, now that you all number. mentioned this, uh, your next you know next week you're gonna have twenty or thirty people come in and say, "I want this in fifteen minutes." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> all have that. <laughs> I mean, you know, typically, uh, I mean, you know, ninety nine come in from out of state, and you know, they want to drop their deer off and then want to pick it up on Friday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, so, you know, like George said, I mean, typically the hunters understand that the, that the longer the deer hangs, the better quality that it is. I mean. The longer the deer hangs, the, you, know, you allow the proteins to break down. You allow the meat to cool down, and yeah. one, it tenderizes the meat, and and two, it just it, it just it, it makes it easier on the cutter to cut. I mean, the firmer the the firmer the carcass, the better the steaks. So before we delve into anything else, another thing we like to do every podcast is our salute to Valors. So uh, being it was Veterans Day weekend this past weekend, I'm gonna go ahead and do two of them. Yes. So the first one we're going to salute was going to be Terry Campbell, who served in the Marines from uh, 1966 to 68, where he did a tour of duty in Vietnam and was awarded a Distinguished Service sharp shoot, uh, Ribbon and a Sharpshooter. And also we're going to do Lloyd Redden. He was in the Army from 44 to 45. He, did, uh, he was in the second wave to hit the Omaha Beach on D-Day. Uh, he was also in the Battle of the Bulge, and he crossed the river over into Germany, and he was a combat engineer. Man, you know, so that's right. There's two two gentlemen that that was in it. They was in two of the some of the largest wars we've ever fought. Yeah, they were in the th- heat so, and the thick of it, man. Yeah, I couldn't couldn't imagine the likes of hitting the beach on D Day. Oh, first wave, second wave, third wave doesn't matter. Any of those waves just survive that was amazing yet to survive it because there was a lot of men that went in on the first wave that didn't that didn't even make it past the beach yep absolutely you know well but uh, lloyd was my dad and and if you, if you look at uh if you look at the history books and uh what they say a combat engineer that time of the year hitting omaha beach and doing what he did uh, the life expectancy time was look it up it was 48 oh, yeah. minutes 48 yeah, minutes. And he lasted a year and a half. Wow. Insane. That's that's amazing. Yeah, it sure is. Well, they didn't call it the greatest generation for no, for no reason. No. You are correct. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Terry and Lloyd, for your all service to this great country, and God bless you. All righty. All right. Back to it. I'm going to hit you out, yeah. but, you know, you're, you're not just a meat processing shop. You guys do a little bit of other things in there. We do. We do. Uh, <laughs> and this is some of our favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this God. Is my, this is my favorite stuff coming up right here. Yeah. yeah we a, we tear this stuff that up. one sitting. Yes. Yeah, we don't yeah. get no more. Yeah, every time we go to a hunting fishing <laughs> I, have to, I have to set enough back because if uh, um, if you guys are in the booth next to us, I may not have enough stuff to sell by the end of the week. That's, That's right, a yeah. Good possibility. Uh, it's a good possibility. I mean, the, uh, uh, we're the only uh, we're the only official um, as far as I mean. At least this is this comes from my inspector. Uh, we're the only true trout processors in the state that 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 that. Uh, process in-state trout i would say you're uh, correct i mean because i i've not heard of anybody else and we do uh you know fresh trout fillets uh smoked mm-hmm. trout trout dip uh trout jerky and we actually toyed around and i'm not sure you guys have tried this i'm coming up uh we actually done the uh um the deal we did a jalapeno and cheese trout summer sausage Oh. oh no! I got, yeah, I tried that. You had that last. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was at. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. That, that was, was Summersville. At, uh, Summersville. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Morgantown. 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 Yeah. Was it, was it Morgantown? Morgantown? Yeah. Yeah. It was Morgantown. Morgantown. And okay. um, and we did a Summersville. Then we did a trout um, snack stick. So, and I, I mean, it just we uh, my brother, uh, he he's kind of the one that got me started in all this stuff. He has four master's degrees in meat science. Oh wow! Oh wow! He got you know, from Purdue, from Cornell. I mean, he's just—if you tell him I said this, I'll call you a liar. But I mean, he—he—he he, he knows more about meat science than I'll ever know. But oh, I think he's going somewhere else with that. <laughs> <laughs> but he—he uh, um, uh, he kind of got me started on this stuff. But and, and basically, he, he's told me all along: if, if it's protein, we can make it into sausage. And yeah. uh, hmm. but I, was, I was very, very pleased with the way the uh the trout products have turned out yeah man. Hey, so, oh, that, yeah 
And so far, they've been a really big hit. They they have, and you all sell those at the Tamarack too, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we, we we're starting back into Tamarack, but uh, yeah, but we sold them to Tamarack, the Greenbrier. Okay. Um, but right now, what we're trying to but do, not the actual product. Yeah, but I mean, we, we sold fresh trout. Yeah, yeah. But what but, we're trying oh, okay. to do, honestly, is, is kind of keep all this specialty stuff. If you want it, you got to go through us. Oh, okay. Uh, because. Gotcha. Um, I mean, it's just, it, it, it's such a unique product Yeah. that, um, that we're, that it, it's pretty much, if you want it, you got to come to us to get it. Which is actually, and, and it, it's smart, really. That's just good business right there. That, that keeps people coming back. Man, I'm telling yes, you that, that trout jerky is the best freaking thing I've so, ever had. That, coming back. <laughs> what's that? Does that mean you're coming back? Yeah, I'll be at the shows. <laughs> yeah yeah he'll be back he, as long as he knows no, y'all's there he's gonna be there i mean yeah. i was i was gonna ask if one of them would bring me some back but i doubt it would make it back here so yeah. it won't make it we've tried this whole situation yeah, we've, we've, tried, that whole we've, game. we've tried that game and it don't make it back <laughs> it usually gets opened up halfway through the trip and then it's devoured before we get there yeah i'll tell you what it just just send me your address and i'll send you some Whoa. Oh. hey, oh. hey oh. dan yeah. dan <laughs> Did we not uh, talk about <laughs> Dan? Listen, did we not talk about having him not talk as much? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna put him on mute. Uh, He's only supposed to be a production now, guy. Yeah, it's over now. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you his address, there, Gary. Uh, yeah, we'll send you his address. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Just, just look on that business card. Okay. Nature's voice game call. Let me catch it. It's going to say care of Mike Booth, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> oh, these guys. No, that's good. I mean, it's y'all do some amazing products with that trout and stuff. We got to come up there and check out y'all's place. We haven't been up yeah, there we do. yet. Speaking of that, you guys have anything new coming up, thinking on, working on? Honestly, right now, uh, there's been uh, there, there's two other meat pro- deer processors in this area that have went out of business. Yeah, we so were just talking about that. So you're thing, busy, busy. The only thing I'm thinking about right now is keeping my head above water. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Yep. Uh, we, we last year was the first year that we've had to turn deer away during buck season. So, oh, so this yeah. year, yeah. So, so this year we we uh, I added on a cooler, uh, a new rail system. Um, so, you know, our goal this year is not to turn anybody away, That's good. but, but I'm telling you, it, it, it's getting, uh, uh, yeah. well, I know we've got three of them. What Michael within a mile, three miles of each other <laughs> at the most, three at the miles. most three miles. Yeah. And by Wednesday, most of the time, all three of them are turning away. Oh, they're full. Yeah. yeah. And that's where it is. We're, but we're trying. I mean, we we have the capacity. I can hang right at two hundred. Nice. So, so we're so we're we're hoping two hundred uh, skin on. Yeah. Well, between the two. Um. So we're hoping this year that we don't have to do that. But I mean, everything you know, as long as my skinners, uh, my son's one of the skinners, and uh, uh, he's in college. So as long as he makes it back in time and uh, everybody's in good shape, I, I think we'll be okay this year. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm telling you what, we got an uh, we got a live podcast fireside event coming up in December. Um, we think it's going to be around December the 16th. That's their grand opening for the Breathe Wine and Culture Company. That's where we go out here in Cross Lanes get all of our craft beer before our podcast. But <laughs> we did a we did a fireside live podcast out there in October. You know, for, was it the first part of October? Yes. And it turned out amazing. We had an awesome time. And I think it'd be great for you guys to come down and be some guests on that show to kind of give a, you know, insight on. That's kind of like you know, that's going to be right at the end of the season, pretty much. You know, so, yeah. you know, real close to the end of season, so you guys can give us some good numbers on how things went and well, come down and have a good well, time with us. I uh, I guess this is kind of a good segue into into the other part of what we do. Uh, that part of the year. Um, we're, we're pretty well tied up. We have a, uh, George, my wife and I, uh, we have a nonprofit that we work with, yep. uh, that, that we set up actually. And it's working with that risk youth. And, um, okay. 
and pretty much from the uh, um, from the fourth of December um, through the twenty first of December, we're, uh, we're going to be doing doing things with these kids. Uh, we okay. do, uh, do and and the kids we work with are all um, um, what word am I looking for? They're all um, they're all re- uh, in, in in residential housing. Okay. Uh, so they don't have, you know, they don't have the family. They don't have that kind of stuff. So we go, we do a tree lighting. We, we get them a Christmas tree, do a tree lighting ceremony. Um, uh, we do a full Christmas festival for them. Um, all the kids are bought Christmas presents. Man, that's um, awesome. we, 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 we just, we, we, we kind of want them to, to get the, uh, you know, to get the feel of what a real Christmas is with family and that kind of thing. So, you know, they're, they're going to, we're going to be taking them, um, snow tubing, uh, Christmas tree lighting, um, um, snowball fights. Awesome. You know, the whole, the whole nine. So, so pretty much from December 4th until, uh, until the 21st of December, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be engaged, uh, with the kids, which is, uh, I mean, you know, deer season is something that we love to do, that I love to do. And it, it, it helps my family. Um, but the nonprofit is absolutely positively the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Yeah. And so, um, so after, uh, after the second week of buck season, that, that, that's pretty much what we'll, what we'll be tied up with until Christmas. Okay. Gotcha. Well, we'll definitely have you down for a live because these, these are going to be something that we do on, on the regular. I mean, um, the first one turned out awesome, you know, and it's a great, venue for businesses to you know just get the word out for for what they do and you know the owner of the breathe herself uh cheryl herdman she runs um it's here in cross lanes but they're getting ready to open one up in huntington west virginia and that's going to be the one where we're going to do a grand opening at well i would love to do one with you uh yeah like i said as long outside of the month of december i would uh, we'd love to come down and do one with you yep that would be awesome um, the, the owner, like I was saying, Cheryl Herdman, she owns, um, some kind of uh center for handicapped children or children with disabilities. So she actually runs a center for those kids and it may be, it may include some, you know, children that you all work with. You never know. I mean, it'd be a good oh, thing for you guys to network and get together. Well, if not, we could work with Yeah. If not, we can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Awesome. Yep. Um, so talking about that and, you know, some things coming up, you guys going to hit a bunch of the outdoor shows this year coming up? Yes. Uh, we'll be in Charleston. Uh, we'll be in Summersville. We'll be in Morgantown. Uh, we'll be in the one in Fishersville, Virginia. And yeah. hopefully uh, we'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina this year. Let me know. Have, have oh, y'all man. done the Fishersville before? I say it one more time. Have you all done the Fishersville before? Oh yeah, uh, two years in a row. Okay, good. Is it pretty good show? Uh, it's a really good show. Yeah, we're gonna have to uh, think about doing that one, Dan. Okay. You know, it's, uh, we. Uh, when does that one usually run? February. 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 All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, <laughs> um, but uh, the guy that runs it, he he is. Uh, I, I want to say his name is Mark Hager. Um, but just a fantastic guy to work with. Um, it, 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 it's, he's a real laid back guy. The boy scouts are the ones that the, the local boy scout troop is the one that does all the parking. Um, they get all the benefits from that. And it's just, it, it's a very, very well run show. Um, it's, it's, I want to say it's not quite as big as Charleston. Um, but it's, uh, it's very worthwhile. Well, it, it, it's Would it real- compared to like Morgantown or Summersville? Oh, it's bigger than those. Oh, okay. Wow, nice. Yeah, but uh, th- they do a really good job. They have some really good shows. They have some really good uh, uh, special guests that come in. Uh, I think last year it was uh, was Morgantown was the first time we'd done Morgantown. You know, last yeah, last year was the first time I'd ever done Morgantown. It was a good show. Um, but Fisher's got that. Last year they had uh, a couple guys from from um, tell me out, George. Well, they had uh, Swamp people. Um, they had. Hank Parker. Hank Parker. Um, they've had they've had Lee and Tiffany there in the past. Yeah, no, oh, wow. that, and they uh, backed up off the interstate trying to get in there. Yeah, you're probably two miles two miles to get to the 
stadium. So, so, so they have some, and they have things for the kids. Uh, they have a little uh, trout, trout fishing pond for the kids. Uh, last year they had a live bear display, uh, done you know grizzly bear acts and that kind of stuff. So it, it's nice. It's a real, it's a pretty legit show. Awesome. Yeah, we we definitely need to think about doing that. We've had a couple people ask us to go, but during that time, I mean. Is it not during one of the other shows here in West Virginia? Was we not at something else, Dan, when that happened? Well, but keep in mind, I mean, uh, <clears throat> this show is close enough. It, 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 it's right outside of Harrisonburg, Virginia. Okay. So it, it's close well, it's enough. Two hours from us, but it's three and a half hours from you. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's close enough to where you're going to get some business from these guys. Yeah. And, sure. and it's, well, uh, and they're good folk down there. They really are. I mean, yeah. it's just that. Well, that's no different than driving to Morgantown for us. No, not really. Yeah. I mean, it's about the same. I mean, I think it would be good. We guys missed you guys last year there at the Summersville show. We could have well, definitely was, used was, you all right there. My, but but uh, we'll be back this year. Awesome. Cool. Uh, another thing we like to do uh, on every episode is a scripture of the day, verse of the day. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and hit that real quick. Our verse of the day today comes out of Isaiah chapter 53 and what i was thinking was you know just where um christmas season's coming up you know everybody's already talking about christmas yeah dan we do let him talk about the lord <laughs> yeah that, this is one thing they allow me to talk about um yeah everything else i i, I get uh i get corrected for after the show y'all <laughs> oh god no i'm just kidding but you know, I was just thinking, you know, uh, just the the whole the whole season. I you know, I, I know it's a time for us to like spend time with family, yes. and it's a time for us to 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 get in the woods with family. That that's a that's an awesome time. Um, just all just all kinds of things like that. But I I really think it's because of the tradition of what we're celebrating at that time of year mm-hmm. that makes all that work. Yeah, I really believe that. Like like. The underlying thing we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. I just I don't know. I think to me that just makes it ten times better, and the whole the whole family thing that much that much better. You know, he said that you know he said that we were we were the called out ones that he made his body mm-hmm. from all walks of life from all over the planet. You know that he made a family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. So anyway, all right. So so this is the, so this was written about Jesus. This is pretty crazy. Uh, it was like six hundred years before he came <laughs> came to the earth. So anyway, says uh, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So, I, I don't know. I, I just I think it's I think it's a good thing just to stay mindful all the time of of that. You know, what I'm saying that none of this, none of the stuff that we see, um, you know, we wouldn't even know how to love people if it wasn't for him. Yeah. And, Agreed, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, that's awesome. And and honestly, I mean that that that's that's a hundred percent of what we do with these kids. I mean, we want them to understand. Um, the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of why we're here and what we do and everything that we do has, has a message behind it. You know, we, we want these kids to understand that, you know, there is a higher being and we're here for a reason. Um, so I, I just, I appreciate That's you right. doing that, Mike. That yeah. was, that yeah. was a big true meaning give a thought. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it all starts with Thanksgiving. That's one of the things that I liked about what you're talking about there, Dave, is, you know, how it starts with Thanksgiving and we lead right into Christmas. I mean, it just, it kind of gets us ready for the whole thing. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and read Philippians 4, 6 through 7 out of the message. Uh, You know, a lot of these, a lot of this time people's worrying about, you know, what are we going to do? We got all the family coming over. It's Christmas time. We're spending all this money. You know what I mean? People's worrying. People's fretting. Well, now's the perfect time to. Not fret. Don't worry. Instead of worry and pray, let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. And that's what that's what we feel when we're in the woods. I mean, that's that's where I'm closest to God. And and I know that's a saying that a lot of people say, but it's true for me. 
um, everything coming together for the good, we will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. That's good, isn't it? That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good, especially for this time of year. Yeah, that's really good. It is. I mean, it's fitting. Huh. So, Mike, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing that. That, that that's uh, that sets the stage for everything. I, that, that, that's pretty cool. Yep. That's that's one of the things we like to do, man. That's that's our um, you know, that's our platform. Yes. God, family, country, and everything outdoors. That's right. So that's right. Yep. Well, we appreciate yep. you guys coming on this evening. It was an awesome time. No, I appreciate you having us. This was uh it was a good break from uh from the daily grind. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, for oh, sure. No Absolutely. You guys are slam busy and we know it, so I still need I, uh, I still need that guy's address so I can get his, 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 his hey, stuff. Hey, buddy, yeah, we'll, I'm gonna we'll get, get that to you. Buddy. you. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I will get it to you. I will get it to you. <laughs> Don't worry, shut up, Dave. Yeah, Dave. Hey, I promise I'll take care of you. All right. All right, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Yep. Well, guys, we appreciate you all. Thank you for your time. And it was, like I said, it was an awesome time this evening. You guys are doing great things, providing the community with a great service, processing their harvest. And you're also providing the, the communities taking care of those uh, at-risk kids and the risk youth. So yes. we appreciate you with that uh, nonprofit organization as well. That's amazing. awesome. So, uh, guys, be sure to check out Hunter's Choice Specialty Products. They're on Facebook. We've tagged their page on this live podcast, so you can visit their Facebook page, get their phone number and their website address. And contact them if you need processing. I know there's a lot of places here in the area like me and Dan were talking about that get full during that time of the year. So reach out to them. It's just a short drive to Shady Springs, West Virginia, and you can take your uh, deer there. So they'll, they'll get you taken care of the next day. So, All right. Thank you all for listening. Be sure to check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and we're on wherever you get your podcasts. So thank you all for listening. Have a great night. This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Outdoor Pro Shop, LLC. Outdoor Pro Shop is a family-owned and operated firearms dealer and sporting goods retailer. They have pay-over-time options, a rewards program, and customer service satisfaction that is unmatched. They might not be the biggest, but they strive to be the best. Contact them today at 240-360-1298 or visit them on the web at www.outdoor-pro-shop.com. That's Outdoor Pro Shop, 240 340 360 1298